Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to create this. It's a title crawl, also called a new style ticker. Now the old uh, legacy titler has some kind of crawling setting in it, but that titler is just old ass and not very good. If you've moved to the new titler or the new graphics, uh, essential graphics panel or Mogerts, um, then you're happy that you've got way more control and you can actually animate, but there is no crawl. And by, by crawl, I mean a sideways, horizontal, not vertical. Uh, there's already a vertical credits uh, that you can do. And I've got a tutorial on how to do that. This is about creating a crawl. So the first thing to do is to get your text and don't type the text inside Premiere Pro because there's a good chance if you want something to crawl, you want it wider than the screen and you can't type, you can't see when it's wider than the screen. So any kind of simple text editing program, I'm gonna use Notepad and I'll copy the text and paste it into Premiere Pro. What's important is that there are no returns, also called carriage returns. So someone hasn't hit return or enter at the end of lines. It has to be a long flowing bunch of text. All right, let's go have a look. So here I am in Notepad and you'll know you've done the right thing when you resize the window and the text keeps going. There's no returns in here. If you have a return in here, it was it's not going to work. By the way, you'll notice that I've got what's known as sentence case here, so that each, uh, so the first letter of each sentence is capitalized. And that's what happened when I copied this from Wikipedia, but I wanted it all caps because a lot of these tickers, in fact, all of them that I've seen, a, a, a ticker or a crawl is all in caps. And I didn't want to have to type this all again. So, if you use Adobe Illustrator, and if you're a Creative Cloud user, you've got Illustrator, you can just use it to change the case. Paste the text, select the text, and in the text uh, menu, change the case to all uppercase, as I've done right here. So I'll select all of this here. I'm gonna make sure I only get to that uh, letter T there, and I'll copy that. And back in Premiere Pro, I'm going to go to my graphics workspace. So select that. I'll grab the type tool and click down here in this area about where a ticker would be. Click once and then paste. And I'm glad this happened because this is some kind of weird ass bug. So select all, control A, on Windows, Command A on Mac, and change the font to anything else other than what it is, and you'll fix it. I just had that happen. I don't know why it happens. So if it's off kilter like that, that's a weird ass bug. So while you're, while you, right after you click and paste, select all, choose a font, and it fixes it. All right, let's go look what we have. And this is why. I didn't have any carriage returns and you could scale the window. So select 10% and you'll see the type goes off the screen all the way. You didn't have to go all the way out there and make a box. That box ends where the type ends. So if your, your type is longer, then it's going to be longer. If it's shorter, it's going to be shorter. So don't change that. I just wanted to show you what's happening outside of that area. So I'm gonna, with my uh, text selected, I'm gonna format this just a little bit lower. And I chose uh, Depot New, which is uh, part of your Creative Cloud license. So that's where my crawl is going to be. And down in the, my timeline, it starts at five seconds by default. I'm gonna drag this out to the full duration of this clip that I want it to be select it and go to the effects controls. And this is where you're going to animate the properties of this. So twirl down and look for position. This is the number that we're going to change, the horizontal position over time. So the very first, you want to start the animation with the crawl 
off the screen. So if you put your mouse here and just drag to the right, you'll put it off the screen. And when it disappears, select the position stopwatch and you've added a keyframe. Now we can go near the end. And here's my little tip for creating the end keyframe. Don't go right to the end because you can't see anything. Go near the end and now change this. Now remember, this is really, really long. So if you hold the shift key down while you're clicking and dragging, it moves it quicker. So I'm holding shift and dragging. You can see it's moving very fast. I don't even care what the number is. I just want to keep dragging until it goes off the screen. Now I can get this keyframe and drag it to the end. And when I hit play, when the clip ends, that's when it ends. So it starts off screen and finishes off screen. That's as easy as it is. Now to dress this up a little bit, you want some kind of background behind it. And you might want to do this. I don't. I don't think this looks right. Back over my essential graphics, if you turn on the background, make this larger, make it darker, this is an easy way to fill in the background. But the way that tickers usually work is there's a background graphic, a bar that shows up and then the type moves along. It's like two independent things. So you need a separate object to do that. And here's the key thing. You don't need an object as long as we have. You only need it as wide as the screen. So I'll go back to my type and turn off the background. I don't want that. Instead, I'll go to my pen tool and grab the rectangle tool. And I'll click and drag close to that edge and drag something out. Now I'll grab my move tool. And yeah, that's another weird ass bug. It jumps up in the air like that. That's very weird. So over in the right, we have to change the stacking order because the shape is covering the type. So I'll drag that down. And now let's go back to the beginning. Well, let's do it up here. So now we've got the type moving in front of the bar. That's getting close, but I still think we can dress it up a bit. What if the bar started off screen first, the bar came on screen, and then the type came on screen? Again, that's a really common type of, of animation. Oh, here's another tip. If you select both of these and click on this alignment, we'll align them center. So the text is now in the middle of the bar. Okay, so let's go back to animating this. So if the text starts right away, then that's going to be a, a problem. Oh, <laughs> all right. Here's a typical thing that, that I'll mention, and then I realize it's the wrong way to go. Remember I resized the bar? Well, that created another keyframe. But here's another little tip. I've got two keyframes that I want to change, the beginning and the end. The number I want to change is this second number here. This is 101.7, and I want it to actually be 109. Watch this. I'll select that and copy it. I can delete this keyframe, go back over here, paste it, go to the next keyframe, paste it. Now it's going to be aligned at the beginning and the end of the keyframe. I make that mistake too often. All right, so let's look for the bar. Where's our bar? There it is. We're not changing the appearance. So I'm going to move just ahead a little bit, add a keyframe for position for the bar. I'll go back to the beginning, and just like the text, I'm holding shift down and dragging the bar out. So now the bar comes in. But that's where I want the text to start. So if you hold your shift key down, you'll stop where that one is. And I've got another tutorial that shows you that instead of having to scroll up like this, go up, down, up, down, if you just turn on show only keyframe properties, guess what? 
it collapses everything. Now it's easier to work with just these two things. So this, this is where the text starts. So if I hold my shift key and move it to here, now the bar comes flying out, boom, now the text comes in. If I want the bar to look a little bit more organic, right click on it and choose ease in. And now we've got a Bezier keyframe so that when it hits the end, boom, it just floats in and then our text comes up. And now it's going to play, that's our ticker for the whole time. And when that leaves on the other end, that bar can also animate out if we wanted to. But that's a really typical kind of animation you see in these tickers where the bar comes in and the text comes up. You could also have that bar scale from the center. So whoop, it grows and then the text comes however you want. And I've got some examples here at the beginning just to show you what they look like. You can see this has a, a graphic that comes in on the left and also has a bit of a shadow. And then this goes underneath of that graphic. And then I've got the same with different colors. And if you look very closely here, let me zoom in 400%. You see I've got gradients on here, almost looks like there are bars. It looks a little bit like a beveled edge on, a, on that. And the way that I'm doing that is on my shape, instead of filling it with a, there it is. I'm filling it with a gradient and these gradients are very tricky to create. So I end up with something that looks like that. Live comes out, it's another graphic and this shows up and I love that this tucks in underneath here. So creating the, the crawling text is pretty easy. And remember, if you find that weird bug, you can select all and then change the font. Um, and then that fixes that, that alignment problem. Um, I found that once that I, I did that, I, I would copy that text each time and then the, that problem would be gone. So there you go, That the creating of the text is pretty easy. You've got two keyframes, you start off screen, you end off screen. Um, you could type new words, so you could save this as a Mogart, Mogart and then use it as a, as a placeholder and then just type new text, copy and paste new text each time. Um, add some other graphics, add some gradients in there to dress it up. And if you don't wanna work too hard on these, guess what? You can buy a whole bunch of them from Video Revealed. We've got 30 of them for only $10. Each one is completely animated with placeholder text. There's graphics above, there's different colors, different fonts. I said 30 tickers for 10 bucks. Uh, how do you get those? You can get those by going to our brand new store on Video Revealed. You can go to uh, videorevealed.com and click on the store and you'll see the tickers there and you can uh, buy those for $10. Well, there you go. Make your own or let me make 30 of them and make it easier. If you're, if you're new to Video Real, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more, you can do that through the store. You can actually support us through the front, through the, the uh, store where you can donate uh, through PayPal to us. And we do appreciate that. We've got lots of great PayPal supporters. We really do appreciate everyone's support. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to show you the things that are missing in Premiere Pro, show you how you can uh, work on them, and then also give you the opportunity where you can just grab a whole bunch of them and start working with them right away.